Hello everyone, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Today we're going to look at adapting this to work with this by means of this little box. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, a while ago I picked up this TI-95 Pro Calc and noticed that the former owner had these nice note cards in here that listed a lot of numbers and it looked like a lot of programs and I wasn't sure what that was for. After I read the programming manual, yeah, I'm weird, I read manuals. After I read the manual, I realized that these were all register numbers that the programs use. That's where he would enter his data and then run the program and get the results. And all of these are saved on this battery back RAM cartridge here and before I erase this for my own purposes I wanted to find a way to back it up and as it happens TI had built in a I don't know if you can see that there's a better shot later built in an IO connector right there and they had a tape interface but can't find those anymore so hence we made this little blue box to adapt to the Commodore C2 and data set. Follow along and we'll see how it's made. Now this video is just a brief overview of the whole process. I tried to make the video short. It's 15 to 20 minutes and I'll give you an idea of uh, the process all along of creating something like this. If you want more detail on a particular item like uh, creating a 3D printed enclosure or modifying a stock enclosure, then let me know and I'll do a video on in more detail on those aspects of it. All right, let's get started. I wanted to save the programs off the TI-95 somehow, and I found out that back in the day TI did make a cassette interface called the CI-7, and I found bits and pieces of information around, but the interfaces themselves are rare as hen's teeth. The best pictures I found were on the Atari Age forum, and here you can see a picture of the bottom of the board and the top of the board. And it's a fairly simple unit. It's got uh, three output leads. This plugs into the uh, calculator right here. And basically what this is doing is providing a remote control line and an input and output converting from digital to analog and then analog to digital. So I initially thought about building my own cassette interface. I, and then I thought, hey, you know, the Commodore data set, the C2N, is basically a tape recorder with all that interface stuff built in. I wonder if I could use that. So I looked in the service manual PDF. Okay, this arrangement here is to supply power to the cassette motor and basically this takes the 9 volt unregulated DC supply and switches it on and off and it's going to be dropped down quite a bit with this arrangement so you get about six six and a half volts to the cassette motor. The cassette sense here uh, tells the Commodore 64 when you've pressed a play or record button uh, on the tape deck. The cassette right is the output line from the Commodore to the uh, tape deck and the cassette read of course is the opposite. And this 5 volt line right here supplies power to the electronics in the tape deck. So basically this gives us everything we need. The whole interface is built. We've got the tape deck and the interface all in one. At this point, I am testing the cassette motor enable line. So I'm just saving a random file. And when it's asked me to position the tape, the output's high. In other words, the motor should have power here. Then I press OK. And when it asks you to press record, notice that the signal is now low. So it's turned off power to the cassette motor. And when you press 
record and then press OK, it uh, sends the line back high so the motor has power again. I didn't want to cut the connector off my data set, so I laid out this simple circuit board in Eagle, the free version, which is just a card edge connector with the king slot in the right place, or so I thought, and some solder pads for a two tenths of an inch uh, connector, which is just what I found in my junk drawer. Then I exported this, the Gerber files from this, loaded those up into CAMBAM, and milled out this board on my TEG mill, which we'll see next. Here is the machining process for that first board. We start out drilling some holes. Now I've glued a piece of single-sided PCB stock down to a piece of cast acrylic um, that I've machined flat. I use a, a spray glue that's really easy to remove. Next up, we're using a 1 inch bit to machine out the traces. This is simple enough that I'm just machining everything away in between the traces, and I can use a large bit like this. Then we're using a 16th inch uh, diamond cut router bit to cut the board shape out. Once the machining is done, I use a very small heat gun to slightly heat up the board area, release the glue, and then I can pop off the excess PCB stock, and then gently slide the board out of place. And here's the completed board. Then I'll clean the spray glue off of everything with a little bit of acetone. I actually made three versions of the simple board uh, to get the slot in the right place. And uh, I figured out that on the Commodore data sets, they only had the connector pins on one side. If I had made a cardboard template of that, it would have made it a lot simpler. Here I am test fitting the third version of the simple board and seeing that it plugs all the way into the connector. And you can see there's only pins at the, toward the top of that connector. And I made a label to show me what was what on the other side. Now that I had a good board, I connected both of my bench power supplies, one outputting five volts to power the electronics and one outputting about six volts to power the cassette motor. You can see the five volt line is only drawing about 20 milliamps. That's pretty consistent. And then when we press play, the cassette motor draws about uh, 100, 120 milliamps in that range. And that's pretty consistent. Fast forward and rewind, draw a bit more, especially when you hit the end of the tape, it can uh, peak up to about 250 milliamps. I made a connector to fit the TI-95 using a 10th inch spacing uh, female header. I soldered a ribbon cable onto that and I glued a uh, little piece of plastic in the top center to act as a key. Here is the test setup and I've already saved a program from the TI-95 to the cassette and I'm getting ready to load that. Here I am clearing the memory. We're going into tape mode, saying we want to read in a file, a program, and we're going to enter the file name. I just use a really simple name, QQQ, and ask you to position the tape. OK, press play, OK. That's just like loading or saving to your Commodore or just about any other computer of the era. It found the program and it's reading it in. It's done loading. It asks us to press stop and then we say OK. And we're all done reading it in. Now I've power cycled the calculator and we're going to go look at look up that program in memory and verify that it's there. There is our program. Now that I knew this idea would work, I needed to get a few more parts in order to build the final version. I needed some type of transistor to uh, switch power on and off to the cassette motor, uh, a little 5 volt regulator to power the uh, electronics, and a DCN jack, preferably a barrel jack, uh, to provide 6 volts to the setup. So I got to looking uh, for different parts and reading data sheets and I decided to use a MOSFET and then uh, 
you know, found a MOSFET that was small, it would be easy for other people to solder in that type of thing. I didn't need a 20 amp MOSFET, and I found this little one which wasn't too expensive. It was a four pin dip rated at 1.1 amp. And I found a nice little DC barrel jack like this. And I decided to use an 8 pin Molex right angle header. I use these Molex uh, microfit connectors all the time and I already have the pins and crimper and things like that. So that made the decision for me. And once I had the parts picked out that I wanted to use, I did a basic layout in Eagle. I kept the terminal block on here and then I realized that this thing would plug into the data set cable here and have a wire coming out here and here or there and it would be kind of cumbersome having wires coming out everywhere and needing cuts on every side of the enclosure. So I tried to, to simplify that a little bit. So here is the final version. We have the same barrel jack and Molex header here. I added an LED so you can tell when the cassette motor has power. And we've got our little 5 volt regulator here for the electronics. This 2N2222 inverts the signal uh, coming from the TI calculator. It is an active high, so we need to invert that to use with our MOSFET here. You can also think of it instead of an active high, you can think of it as an active low disable. You might notice that the connectors look like they're hanging way off the edge of the board here. The reason they're doing that is so they stick out approximately to the edge of the enclosure. Ah, enclosure, yes. Once I had this general idea of the number of parts to go on the board, I went to looking for an enclosure. So I looked at a few different uh, types of enclosures and looked at the data sheets to get an idea of the size, uh, that type of thing kind of laid out on paper with some sketches, how things would fit. And I decided on this enclosure by Bud, they're not very expensive. So that's why the board was laid out with this type of arrangement. So the card edge connector sticks out of one side and we've got both our other connectors for power and or power and the IO out the other side to make construction easier. And the LED will just poke through a hole in the top of the case. I mentioned earlier about making a paper template of the circuit board and here's why that's handy. So I printed this out full size, glued it to some uh, poster board, I think three layers, and it lets me mount the connectors marked a position on an enclosure with some blue tape over the black enclosure and kind of see how that fits. Test the other side for fit and you see here that it's not going to quite work with the circuit board kind of in that stock position. And it's a pretty good resemblance to the final circuit board. So I know when I get to that point that everything should fit fine. No electronic construction video would be complete without a fast forward montage of soldering parts onto a circuit board and it gave me an excuse to try out my new GoPro mount above the workbench. Here is the final setup. Upper right is the TI-95 calculator. Lower left is the Commodore C21 data set. But a little blue box in the middle in the back is the interface we just built. On the calculator, we are going to take a peek at the program that's currently in the program memory. There we go, that's our program. Now we're going to look over at the data set and see that it's at 20 on the counter. And the green light on the blue box is on, meaning that we have power to the data set currently. So we can fast forward and rewind and all that stuff to position the tape where we want it. And back at the calculator, we are going to go to tape mode and we're going to write our memory out, program memory. We're going to give it a file name of QWE, but you can't figure out where I got that from. It's asking us to position the tape and notice that as soon as we click OK, the tape's in position, there's no power to the data set anymore. So we can press record and play, 
and the tape's not going to move anywhere. But as soon as we press OK, it turns on the power and we start saving and you can see the red LED on the data set saying we're in save mode. And we're done recording. Ask us to press stop. It keeps the power on at this point. See the power still on. And we're going to verify, which means that it's going to read in the program and compare it against what's in memory. We enter the file name to look for. It asks us to position the tape. So we can rewind it to about the 20 position. There we go. And we say OK. Press play. Power shut off at this point. We press play. And as soon as we click OK, it's going to turn the power back on to the motor. And now it's playing and it's reading that file in. It's searching for it. It's verifying. Oop, now it says our file's OK. Here is the cable and on the other end. I hope you found this overview of the design process of this adapter interesting. We took a look at the output signals on the TI-95 and how the C2 and data set worked and we designed an adapter to hook one to the other and it worked quite well. This should work for other vintage platforms too or if you're creating a vintage style a computer of your own and you need a data set for it then consider the Commodore C2N. They're still available and they're easy to work on. Just replace a couple of belts and do some cleaning and they're just about as good as new. So, thanks. Oh, one more thing. Um, look down below at the subscribe button and click on that guy. If you haven't done that already I sure would appreciate it. And there is a little bell shaped icon down there too and if you click on that guy it'll tell you when I post a new video. Otherwise, YouTube might not ever tell you. All right, until next time.